important topic right here really talks about the or points to the state of the industry in comic books. And I'm going to go ahead and just give it to you straight right now. Um, Aftershock, as of uh, yesterday, the day before I recorded this video, has filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Uh, assets uh, on the upward of $50 million in terms of uh, that as well as liabilities. The reason why I wanted to discuss it is because of the industry itself, but you'll see in terms of one of the people that that's named um, in the, as far as old money um, or they owe money to is the great Cliff Richards. Some of you don't know that with Aftershock, Cliff had done a lot of work um, for them. It appears that they had not been able to really pay him on some of this stuff. And it really speaks to um, the problems. Now this had been bur like kind of uh, let's say happening for months, or we knew that something was going to happen with this company. It's not going to be the only one. And I'm going to talk about this here in a little bit, but um, as reported right here, this was days after aftershock went viral for claims regarding failure to pay creative royalties. And we covered some of that. Uh, you had creatives that were saying that they were not getting money. The comics publisher has filed bankruptcy for, or for bankruptcy protection. The company filed its paperwork in the district of the central California listing assets between 10 and uh, 10 and $50 million. The filing pay paperwork, hundreds of creditors are listed including nearly 400,000 old to Canada based printer JS printing. I should hit them up. Maybe they, uh, maybe they want to do some work. Uh, dozens of creators are also listed and they owe nearly $20,000 uh, in unpaid royalties. Earlier this month, the publisher was accused by several comics creator of failing to pay royalty payments in a statement obtained by comicbook.com. A spokesperson for the company said, no non-payments existed. I can confirm internally, right? Because I know people within this industry, there are absolutely non-payments that are pending right now. They have not only been late and is still, despite their, uh, despite what's going on, um, they apparently or allegedly um, are, are still dealing with some problems, right? As far as getting that those payments cleared for people to, of course, benefit from that have done work thank you for reaching out for easy reference here is our statement on the matter the company uh, is addressing late payments as outstanding funds owed to the company come in there are no 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 non-payments uh, the full statement reads everyone who is owed money will be paid uh, we recognize our obligations and consider creative compensation our number one priority so they are essentially admitting that they still they're going to get paid but they're working through it. It looks like uh, we apologize for the situation and we are making our best efforts to rectify as quickly as possible. There are a lot of pending payments, certainly in this. If you look in terms of who they owed money um, to, you have uh, the certain comic book creators such as um, this person who it looks like uh, these debts that are declared of 18,000 got 15,000 here. 8,600 there. Um, it looks like even San Diego comic cons looking for some, uh, needing to get paid. And man, it's a lot of money that they were spending on silly stuff, paying CNN. It even looks like in TBS. Look, the comic book industry is on a house of cards. This is where we get real. Okay. I done told you fools, man. A lot of folks that don't like myself, they don't like people that are kind of doing the indie circuit, especially that are opposite to them. Let's say uh, philosophically, uh, politically, in some cases, whether it be myself, folks in the comics gate community, whoever you if you are protecting the major indies as well as the. Uh, even the big the big guys y'all are on y'all know and they know it that's the crazy thing are on a house of cards at any given point it could collapse you for whatever reason this is what i don't get it benefits absolutely nobody to pretend that the comic book industry is in a good spot it benefits nobody nobody benefits from that come across comes out with these numbers and these weirdos see stand accounts on twitter act as if oh well it's doing great you look at the data more so, and you see how much of that data actually is attributed to like manga sales and how you look even on units sold on units sold. They're doing worse than previous years. 
There is a fundamental problem right now. And they could sit up here and try to put makeup on it. But the reality is that it's uh, you're on an outdated, archaic model. And the people that benefit from, or let me say this, the people that that take the biggest hit from just ignoring the problems or acting like they're not there, gaslighting people, it's the creatives. Because you're not coming up with any solution. Now, in some cases, it goes both ways now. Hold up. It's not that I get enjoyment out of this. Like I said, Cliff Richards is impacted by this. There's money that he's needing to, to get. Now, don't worry. We're going to make sure he's employed over here at the Riververse. We're almost complete with uh, ISOM too, and I'm going to put him on as much work as I realistically can put him on until we start ISOM 3. But you got to stop pretending like there's no problem here. In some cases, I look at it like this. Y'all have protected this industry, and some of y'all are going to get what y'all deserve. You, This is what you wanted, okay? Aftershock is not going to be the last one to... Now, bankruptcy is huge. I'm not saying every single one of them are going to do that. But there's going to be some scale down because what they're doing right now is not sustainable. The amount of money they're putting in it is not sustainable. And not every company is it has the luxury of a Marvel or DC where they're tied to this massive mega corporation. OK, this this massive company that is can subsidize these projects in other ways. So if you're losing money here, well, there's another department that's making the money and you know, you can be okay, but definitely for these major indies, a lot of y'all don't have that luxury. So you're, you're, you're screwed, but y'all protect the industry so much missing payments and all that stuff. Look, man, I'm not absolutely, I'm not going to sit up here and pretend like I got all the answers. What works for me, works for me and my company. What works for you and your company is going to differ. It's going to differ person to person. Some people's efforts are going to be, uh, maybe they can take something that I did and apply it, but not everything's going to be a direct crossover. Some things they're going to have to figure out by themselves, implement what other folks have done, and it works for them. That's the beauty of the parallel economy. But just operating on that old model, even going through the whole diamond situation, all that is archaic and lousy and it's putting y'all on the streets. It's about to put y'all on the streets. The comic book industry is in shambles right now. And I say that as a person that's in the comic book industry. Now, I'm not even expecting to make $3.7 million every campaign. But what I'm what I'm making sure that we do is we we lay our foundation and do not make do not be just spending money for the sake of spending money. I have people that I got to get work. I got to get paid. I have employees. I want to make sure that they're all taken care of. And we do everything within our power to um, ensure that there's an, uh, the ability to grow. At minimum, you want to break even, but the ability to grow. You know, I set money aside. We make all this money from ISOM. I haven't touched it, man, as far as me taking the money from it because I got employees that I got to make sure that I get paid. So what I do is I take money for, I know uncle Sam I'm going to try to get his and I put those in, in the account as well as a payroll. I put that stuff in an account and I don't touch it. You know, that way I know, even if there's a, 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 you know, Hey, this book doesn't do as well. I can at least make sure my guys are getting paid. But all this glitz and glamor is everybody act like there's nothing going on with the industry. Right. And then y'all knock the people who have presented an alternative, something that's far, far more feasible. People crap on the crowdfunding. And I'm not I took the vision of what a crowdfund is while doing it or handling it as what it actually was, was a pre-order, because I'm not what a crowdfund is, is. You get the money from the crowd to fund the project. So basically the project's not getting funded for the most part, unless you are hitting a certain number and you're getting those fees to complete it. Whereas to with ours, everything was already done. But people crap on the guys doing it the other way, which that's a far more reasonable business plan than whatever the hell these guys, the major indies as well as the uh, big two are doing. Where they're just actively bleeding money, 
you know, at least with these guys, they're doing it in a way that they can ensure that they're not overprinting, they're not underprinting even for that matter. They're, they're doing stuff in a far more efficient way. They're able to gauge the market. You better get in on that. But the problem with that and why maybe it's unattractive for those guys is that a lot of them can't, that that are tied to some of these companies aren't going to be able to do it on their own like that because you don't have the draw. You know, you don't got the ability to be able to get people enthusiastic about your project. And some of this, these projects are lousy. There's no true audience for it. It's just you making material. That's for the sake of making material. And yeah, you may get comicbook.com or CBR or the bleeding asshole over there. Uh, you may get some of those guys to cover your work. But that doesn't mean anything. The retweets that you get from them, Twitter weirdos or the stand accounts and the pronouns and the bio with the pride flags ain't by jack diddley stuff like this would not happen if the industry isn't where it's at now like i said i'm not acting like well they were spirit spending irresponsibly of course they were but they're not the only ones doing it and you're gonna see soon enough as these companies start having to be forced to scale down especially during a recession forced to scale down we're gonna get more of this they're not the only company that's uh people missing payments with they're not the only one that's going to maybe have to file for bankruptcy. Address the problem. See, I think that I look at it from a creative creative's perspective. I just also happen to be a businessman. But I've known I talked I've talked to y'all about this on stream where I've done all these different things, man, with my like we with the streams. I talk to you guys about this type of stuff. And I'm like, man, I remember getting in this game. And it was the same with music, where there's a bunch of stupid stuff being done and nobody thinks to ask the question why. And they dare. Anybody that challenges the status quo really in any aspect is seen as an enemy. They get so angry and aggravated if you like are not doing it their way because they act like with the status quo, they benefit the most from it. And it's like Stockholm Syndrome because the people that are going to defend it the most are going to be those that are getting screwed over, getting beat up on. And abused. The comic book industry is in shambles. That's just the reality. You're getting your tails kicked by uh, the folks out east in Japan in your own house. Your content, nobody is enthusiastic about it. And those that generate the, uh, the actual enthusiasm get the willing paying customers are able to make money, make this a lucrative, profitable business you hate. Unless they can co-sign your political views. This ain't sustainable, bro. I'm trying to tell you. This ain't going to be the last company. So y'all better hold on to your butts, man. Because this ain't over. Wherever you're viewing the content, I appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, you may be interested in my comic book company, Riververse Comics. Our first book and campaign, I Sum Number One, brought in $3.7 million with tens of thousands of satisfied customers. Visit Riververse.com to check out our store and stay up to date with the latest campaigns from one of the hottest new comic book companies. Also, my first big step towards a parallel economy was the development of my personal website, ericdjuly.com. This entirely replaced my Patreon. Now, if you enjoy this content, please consider becoming a member over at the website. We have an ever-expanding list of perks for various membership tiers, a forum, and a phone app. Some of these perks will even benefit you if you're fans of the Ripperverse. Anyway, I appreciate you so much for being a supporter and or customer. I even got a little love for my haters.